So tonight's uh, question is about fun. I don't think it's really about fun, but my answer is going to be about fun. So the person asks whether they're practicing correctly. They say they've been doing this for some time, noting, using the technique, but they're not sure how to, f how to know whether they're doing it right because it's not fun. So I thought I would expand this answer to discuss the topic of fun. It won't take a long time, hopefully, but just go over some of the issues around meditation and fun. So the, the, the reason why your meditation might not be fun, I can think of three reasons. That's what I'll talk about. First reason why your meditation might not be fun is because you're doing it wrong. It's quite, quite easy to do, to practice incorrectly, especially if you don't have a teacher. If you're just going by my booklet on how to meditate, it's quite possible that you're practicing wrong. And by wrong, I mean getting something wrong. You're, you haven't quite understood, perhaps, how to do the noting, and so you're trying to make the things go away. Sometimes you have extreme problems to the extent that someone, rather than when they have pain, saying to themselves, pain, pain, they'll repeat to themselves, no pain, no pain. Or if they're afraid, they'll say, calm, calm. And because the point, their misunderstanding is that they should repeat what they want to happen. A less extreme but still wrong perspective is to say to yourself, for example, pain, pain, and want the pain to go away, or to say thinking, thinking, and be frustrated when it comes back. And without any input from a teacher, or feedback from a teacher, uh, it can be quite discouraging because you have a perspective, an attitude of trying to make control things and make things ch change based on your whim, which really is the, the whole point of the meditation, to see that that's not possible. So practicing wrongly can make uh, the meditation painful, unpleasant, especially if you have a wrong perspective, if you have a wrong attitude, a wrong outlook. I think I could suggest that wanting your meditation to be fun, though I don't really think what this person was saying is they wanted it to be fun, but it, it's fun is not really inherently different from any other kind of pleasure seeking. We call things fun, we seek out fun as a part of our pleasure seeking. It's really just another word for a type of pleasure seeking, similar to eating or, or having sex or listening to music, you know, dancing we say is fun, but deep down what we really mean or what we're really uh, responding to is the pleasure involved. So the idea that your meditation should be pleasurable is wrong and has, has um, problematic consequences because you'll be frustrated when the things that you find pleasurable are mixed with the things you find unpleasure, uh, displeasurable or displeasing. The second reason why your practice might not be fun is because you're not good at it. And really being, being not good at meditation is essentially doing it wrong. But it's a different kind of doing it wrong, I think. Because you call something, you say someone's doing it wrong when there's something fundamental about their technique, about their perspective, about their, their approach that is problematic, that can be easily corrected through um, explanation, through advice. Um, not even exactly advice, but just pointing it out when you're doing that wrong. Like, Take weightlifting, for example. Um, you might 
try to lift too much or you might try to lift the wrong way uh, and you might hurt yourself as a result if you're practical if you're training in sports you know golfing it's one thing to not be good at golfing but it's another to maybe hold the stick the wrong way uh, the club club the club the wrong way or use the wrong club right that's doing it wrong. If you're trying to hit it very far and you use the putter, you're doing it wrong. And in meditation there's similar, similar problems, of course. But not being good at something means you have an understanding of the theory, which hopefully you do if you've read the booklet and we've gone over it and reassured ourselves together that you're doing it. You understand the theory. That's not shouldn't be something you should worry about because there's no deep theory that you have to understand and I think you have to make a break uh, as I'll make a line because you'll drive yourself crazy if you think oh is there am, is there some theory that I don't know am I am I doing it wrong it's a common common question and you have to separate no you're not doing it wrong per se you're doing it wrong in the sense that you you're not good at it and it's important to understand that that's a part, of, that's true about meditation, that you have to get good at it. It is a training. It's not a switch that you turn on. It's not just a, a, a time out where, okay, all that craziness in my life, I'm going to put aside and do nothing, and, and poof, I'm going to be peaceful. It is, in fact, like that. Meditation is, in the end, to let go of all the things that cause us suffering, stop doing the things that cause us suffering, but your mind's not going to let you do that because we habitually seek out suffering, not intentionally. We think it's going to make us happy, but it doesn't. And so because of those habits having been built up, we're in a real bind. We try to sit still and we're not going to sit still. We try to focus and we're not going to focus. We try to just observe something and our mind's got got a whole other, other idea. So not being good at it, when you say to yourself, pain, pain, but your mind is maybe angry about the pain, or you try to say it and then you're distracted by something else. You try to focus on the stomach, but your mind is distracted. You try to sit still, but you're restless or agitated, or you're falling asleep. There's much about the imbalance of the faculties, right? Just effort and, and concentration are very common. There's not much you can do about that, except get good, right? As you practice more, you're going to get better at it. You're going, and, and part of that, it's not something you can you know, push or pull. It's just through repetition and, and application and diligence, you'll become more energetic, and less distracted. So concentration and energy will start to work together rather than fight each other where sometimes you're restless, sometimes you're falling asleep. So it's important to understand that, that, that you can be doing everything right and it can still be a horrible experience because you're not very good at it and that's like any training. You play golf, it's a horrible experience in the beginning. But meditation is just like that when you finally hit the ball and goes up the grass. When you finally, even just for a moment, you know, oh, I was really mindful there and it totally didn't bother me. You see, you realize you're starting to get good at it. And the third reason why meditation might not be fun is because the goal of meditation is not to have fun. Fun is a, as I said already, a inferior state. Fun is not the goal, nor should it be the goal of meditation or one's life. Having fun is just another means of seeking pleasure. Consider anything we call fun or we think of as fun. How long can you engage in that activity before it becomes boring? Right? Because of course the flip side of something being fun is something being boring. Meditation is very boring. But it's only boring because you see it that way. And the only reason you see it that way is because you stuck to certain things as being fun. And you're addicted 
to those things. This is the addiction cycle. Fun does not escape and cannot escape the addiction cycle. And the addiction cycle cannot escape suffering. It's possible to engage in something without suffering for a time. But the build-up, the lead-up, the result is a susceptibility to suffering. There's no question. You might say, I don't suffer. I, I have fun and I don't suffer. First of all, you're deluding yourself, most likely, because half the time we don't realize how, how stressful and unpleasant our lives are. We try to forget. We've cultivated the ability to ignore and forget how much suffering we have. But second of all, it's not even so much that you do suffer, it's that you're caught up in suffering. You're, you're vulnerable to it. What happens if you get sick? You're a sports you're a, what, a sports person, an athlete, and then you get sick, and you get an illness, or you, I used to do rock climbing, and I was really quite, I was good at it, but then I, I, I got tendonitis in my, in my uh, elbow, tendonitis in my fingers, and I could no longer do it anymore. And that wasn't even a big deal, but you can, people can, like Tiger Woods, he, uh, he hurt himself very bad, I think. I only know that because he's his mother's Buddhist, and so I hear things about him. You can't escape the potential for suffering. Man, what about getting old and sick and dying? How are you going to be when you die? Your state of mind predicts your rebirth, predicts your future predicts your, your peace of mind at when you die. And because of the addiction cycle, we're constantly seeking. When you die, you'll see these bright lights and chase after them, and oh, you'll be reborn. It's funny how other religions talk about the, the bright light. And I saw the light, and then that was a sign of heaven. Well, maybe. We have other stories where people who chased after those lights end up, ended up in hell and suffering. Meditation isn't supposed to be for the purpose of fun, and it isn't even for the purpose of pleasure. We have to understand that, that it's kind of a paradox, where the end goal, of course, is peace. But it's not the peace that you, you enjoy. And really, the whole idea of enjoying things has to be done away with. And that's the profound and radical aspect of Buddhism. Because it seems horrific that you should even suggest to get rid of enjoying things. But the, the whole, our whole concept and system of enjoyment is wrong-minded, wrong-headed, wrong-intentioned. Happiness doesn't work that way. Enjoying involves liking, it involves wanting, it involves needing, it involves addiction. And so it never frees you from the vulnerability of suffering. Happiness, peace, have to be independent of things, events, people, places, things, and events, experiences. If your happiness is dependent on sitting there peaceful and calm, you'll never be peaceful and calm. It's a paradox, sort of, or whatever it is. It's ironic, no, it's, it's something. It's unfortunate. It would be nice that I could want to be peaceful and just be peaceful. But wanting, of course, disturbs your peace. Catch-22, maybe, I don't know. It's, it's a problem. And so our focus can never be on happiness. I've talk, talked about this before. You can never focus on peace and happiness. Your focus has to be on goodness. And really, by goodness, in this deep meditative sense, it means a good state of mind, purity. So when we say to ourselves, pain, pain, or even just rising, falling, thinking, thinking, we're trying to cultivate what we consider to be the purest state of mind. The purest state of mind, the purest arisen state of mind is the one that knows an object just as it is, without judgment, without reaction. It is what it is. Pain is what? Not good, not bad, not me, not mine, not a problem, not something to fix. Pain is pain. Rising is rising. It's a training that we're doing. Why are we focusing on the stomach and the feet? There's nothing special about them. 
but there's nothing uh, worth it. There's not, they shouldn't be dismissed either. There's nothing inferior about them. This is an experience, moving the foot. This is an experience. So our, our focus is not on having fun, absolutely, but it's also not even on peace and happiness, and it never can be. Our focus always has to be on goodness and purity. And that shouldn't be so bad, I mean, that shouldn't sound so bad. Imagine having a perfectly pure mind. The only result could ever be peace, happiness. That's an important distinction, because we go the other way, right? Who in this world uh, thinks of, oh, I'll, I'll well, I shouldn't put, put us down too much, but where in society, you know, in modern society, are we taught about goodness? I mean, I think in religion we often are, and it's not to say many people do have ethics and ideas of helping others and so on. But what is that, what are we told, what is much more prevalent and, and, and in front of us? Seek out pleasure, seek out happiness, do what makes you happy, and so on. And so our focus is on the result. But the only thing that brings that result, truly and sustainably brings it, is, is goodness, is, is the purity of mind. So, I don't think this person was, was it, it wasn't literally saying it should be having fun like, like playing a game, but they certainly did seem to be discouraged, and many people are discouraged. I don't think people think of meditation as a game very much. If you got this far, you're not here to play a game and have fun, but we say something is not fun, and by that we mean it's not pleasurable, which really is the same thing. Again, it's just another fun, it's just another type of pleasure. So don't ever try and find peace and happiness in meditation. Try and find purity and goodness and, and clarity of mind, strength as well of mind. Because happiness is a result, it's not a practice. It's not the cause. Happiness is not the cause of happiness, right? Goodness is. So, some thoughts on fun in meditation. Leave it to the Buddhists to take the fun out of everything. That should be our motto. We take the fun out of everything because it's not good for you. It's inferior. So that's the answer to that. Thank you for listening. <laughs>